Hello. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today on this webinar. My name is Pradyut Roy, and I'm part of the product management team here at Service Desk Plus. I will be talking about the recent updates of Service Desk Plus Cloud during the course of this session. I'll be taking you through all the updates we've made to the product, explain the new features, and talk about how it can improve and expand the capability of Service Desk Plus. Here's a quick look at the agenda for today's session. As many of you would have already noticed, there's been some updates done to the automation tab of Service Desk Plus. We have introduced custom actions and triggers to the product and have also enhanced the capabilities of business rules. I will explain how each of these new features work through the course of this webinar. Let me first talk about custom actions. Now, Service Desk Plus has a bunch of actions which come right out of the box, like adding notes to a ticket, converting a ticket as a service request, duplicating a request, and so on. These are actions performed by technicians on a frequent basis and are part of the daily ticket management workflows. However, different organizations have different requirements. Different technicians have different requirements. They will be needing the ability to add more actions, and in many cases, these actions are specific to their own organizations. With the new custom actions in Service Desk Plus, technicians can now create their own, as the name suggests, custom actions which are customized to their own requirements. Here are the different kinds of custom actions which can be created in Service Desk Plus. The first one is notifications, and then we have tasks, and webhooks. I'll explain how each of these different custom actions can be used and set up in your Service Desk Plus. Let me quickly take you through a quick demonstration of how to set up custom actions, how to use them, and how can they enhance your workflows. As I mentioned earlier, the custom actions are part of the new automation tab which we have in Service Desk Plus. You can find custom actions, triggers, and the enhanced business rules right under the automation tab over here. Now, the first custom action I'd like to talk about is notifications. We have now made setting up notifications much more easier and granular. You can create a notification action for every scenario in your typical day-to-day -day workflow. You can set up an email or an SMS notification, customize your notification content by using the subject and content variables. Now, these notifications are slightly more different than how they used to be with notification rules earlier, where every template was attached to a particular notification rule. But with the new notification custom actions, you can actually set up a generic notification or a specific notification and call this particular notification from any and every other workflow you're actually using. Now, here is how you set up a new notification. I do not have any notifications set up at the moment. So let me show you what it is uh, to set up a new notification like. So you click on the new notification and uh, you quickly enter the name of the notification. In this case, I'm going to name my notification as network issue. And uh, I'm going to select my mode of notification as email. And I'm also given an option to choose which technicians to notify. I'm going to select an existing technician that I already have. I can select my subject. I can pull out uh, pre-listed variables right from the ticket. And in this case, I'm going to use my request ID, new network issue. And I can also have a message. I'll go ahead and save this notification. And as you would notice, this is already listed as part of my notification custom actions. Now that is how you set up a new notification custom action. I'll show you how and when can you actually bring in these notifications a little later in the session. So that was notifications. The next custom action I'll take you through is tasks. Now, creation of a new task as a custom action is very similar to that of a creation of a regular task. However, having a task as a custom action gives the technicians the flexibility to use a particular task action if and when a particular condition or a requirement arises. This was not the case earlier, where tasks were only part of a particular template. Now, here is how you create a new task as a custom action. Again, there are no tasks created by me in my system. So I'll take you through how a new task is created as a custom action. So I'm going to click on new task right here. I'm going to name my task over here. And uh, keeping with the spirit of this demonstration, I'm going to stick to the network category. Network issue. And I'm going to title it as network issue troubleshoot the group is obviously network I can prioritize it and uh, I'll save the task 
Alternatively, I can also pull in a particular task from an existing template right here. So as you would notice, I now have a new task which is part of my custom actions menu. So these tasks are part of my task custom actions. So that was how you can actually create a new task as a custom action. The next feature or rather the next custom action I'd like to talk about is webhooks. Webhooks are new to Service Disk Plus and they're really useful while integrating with a third party product. Webhooks enable the technician to call any external URL or an API to integrate with Service Disk Plus with a third party application. Let me show you how to create a new webhook as a custom action. So I already have an existing webhook which I've created, which I'll show you uh, in uh, action in just a little while. But meanwhile, let me also show you how to create a new webhook. So you create a new webhook button right there. You name a webhook. For example, I already have created a particular webhook. So let me see if I can create another one. This is, let's say, a webhook called uh, Projects. And I'll be taking the webhook URL given by my third party application. And I'll also be taking the header key and the header value, which is provided to me by my third party application. Now, mind you, the, you will have to sign up for another product and go through the API documentation to get access to this information. So let me show you what that information would look like if you already had access to that. So I've, for the purpose of this quick demo, I have already set up an integration between Service Desk Plus and Atlassian Jira. All the APIs and the webhook details I've used for this demonstration have been provided by Atlassian in their documentation, which is made available to all their users. So the intent of this demonstration really is to have all my tickets, which come into Service Disk Plus, move into Atlassian Jira as a new issue. So I've named my webhook as Atlassian Jira, and I also have the URL which I've taken from Atlassian Jira and uh, the method for posting is any new update which I get into Service Disk Plus will be posted into Atlassian Jira. And I also have provided the authorization uh, key and uh, here is my quick JSON script, the template which will be followed for all the tickets from here on. I'm going to save this particular webhook. So these were the few quick custom actions that we have created. Now where and how do we apply these custom actions? These custom actions can be applied as part of triggers and also as part of business rules. The next feature I'd like to talk about is triggers. Triggers are a preset automated workflows which come into play when a predefined condition is actually met on a ticket. These custom actions that we have created earlier can actually be used as triggers as part of a workflow. Technicians can configure notifications, tasks, and webhooks as a trigger. Now, with these webhooks set up as triggers, Setting up integrations with third-party tools is so much more easier. Now, let me show you a quick workflow or rather an example of how a trigger can come into play with your daily process management. This is a scenario which we have built for this particular web session. Let's take a scenario where a network ticket is created and you want a particular issue to be raised in Jira whenever a network ticket is raised. So the workflow is very simple. You want the category network to be met in such a way that this particular ticket will correspondingly raise an issue in Jira. So this is when a trigger would actually come in handy. So this is the workflow that we are looking at. Is the request created? Yes. And if the category is network, it should go ahead and create an issue in Jira. Let me show you how to set up a new trigger with the exact scenario that we discussed. I'm going to set up a new trigger called as Jira network. And this trigger will be raised whenever a ticket is created and this particular condition is met, in which case my category is network. So whenever a ticket, an incoming ticket with a category set as network comes in, I want this particular action to take place. And I'm going to pull my webhook as part of the custom actions from here. Now remember, this is the webhook which we've set up just a little while back the Atlassian Jira webhook, wherein any ticket which actually comes in is then correspondingly going to raise an issue in Jira. So I'm going to select the webhook from my pre-built list of uh, custom actions, in this case, a webhook custom action, and I'm going to choose this one. I'm going to save this particular trigger. So what just happened is we created a new trigger stating with a condition that whenever an incoming ticket comes with the category set as network, 
we want that ticket to also raise an issue in Jira. Now let's see if this condition is actually met and if this trigger actually works. So I'm going to create a new incident and uh, Maria is going to create a ticket with a category set as network. I'm going to save the request. The request is added into my service disk plus portal. Now, what should happen according to our condition, our trigger condition that we've set up is this should raise an issue in Jira. Now, let's go take a look at Atlassian Jira and see if the issue has actually been raised in that system. So we're looking for an issue called network issues in Jira. And there you are. So I have my issue in Jira, which is network issues. I also have the description, which I typed in my SDB portal, which is also carried into Atlas in Jira. So we've successfully shown an example of how a ticket which comes in, which is related to network, is then raised as an issue in Jira based on the trigger condition that we've set up. So integrating with third party products like this is so much more easier now you can actually have conditions you can actually have all of your tickets integrated with some other product based on the conditions whatever is in your business workflow the next feature i'd like to talk about is our enhanced business rules business rules help in organizing and classifying the incoming tickets technicians can set up rules and their specifications which will apply on all their incoming tickets and in turn help them work on their incidents in a much more organized manner with the help of these new business rules, apart from making field updates on an incoming ticket, technicians can also set up notifications as part of their workflows and also stop a ticket actually from being created. Now this in turn will lead to better request management uh, streamlining. So let me quickly show you how we have actually enhanced our business rules and I'll take you through a quick example set up for the purpose of this session. Now here's a scenario where I want to see to that a high priority printer issue is worked upon immediately and it is not put on hold. In turn, I do not want high priority issues which have uh, been raised by a requester which is related to a printer to be never put on hold and I want the technician to work on these tickets right away. So this is my typical workflow wherein if the category of the request is printers and the priority is actually set to high, I want the st uh, status to never be put on hold. If it is put on hold, I want the ticket to go ahead and abort and I do not want this particular action to actually happen. So let me show you how this is actually done with the new business rules workflow. So this is the new enhanced business rules that we have. I'm going to create a new business rule which will do exactly what we just discussed. So I'm going to create a new business rule. And uh, I do not want anybody to edit a particular business rule with these conditions. My category is set to printers and uh, my status is set to on hold and my priority is high. Now this is when I'm going to use the abort process execution uh, feature. I'm going to say with a, a custom alert, which is simply going to say cannot abort high priority printer issues. And I'm going to save this business rule. So I have a business rule right here. And uh, let us see if this business rule uh, kicks in when I'm trying to create a ticket or rather edit a ticket with uh, these conditions. So I'm going to create a ticket. Uh, in this case, again, uh, Julia is creating a ticket with the category printers and uh, obviously the priority is set to high. And uh, printer issue on the sixth floor is my subject. And I'm going to raise a request. So I have my 
a ticket raised by Julia which uh, says that there is an issue with the printer on the sixth floor and the priority is set to high. Now when a technician is looking at this particular ticket and if uh, he or she wants to change the status from open to on hold, we do not want that to happen according to the business rule which we have just uh, written. So let us see what happens when we try to change the status from open to on hold. There you have it. I actually have a quick prompt which actually comes in which is going to give out the message which I just said which is cannot abort high priority printer issues. Now that can be any custom message which you can set for your organization and this is just an example of how you can actually set business rules in such a way that they're much more process oriented and they're much more powerful in your organizations. So that was a very quick walkthrough of all our new features. We believe that these new features will help create new and improved workflows and they'll automate a lot of your new ITS and processes. They'll connect with more third-party business applications and help with integrating with more uh, applications in your organization and finally lead to better and quicker resolution times. Now do let us know if you have any questions, we'll try to answer them here and if you're not able to, we'll write back to you via email and uh, hope you got to understand a bit more about these features and uh, you can always reach out to us on email or any of our social platforms. Thank you so much.